Welcome to Film Snobbery Live. I am your host, Nick Beasley, and I'm joined tonight uh, by our uh, co-host, Jerry Cavallaro. Say hi. 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 It's Jerry, everyone. Um, and we're actually hearing a lot from Jerry tonight because our show is um, going to be kind of just a, uh, a, a kind of chat show, an old school style. Um, we didn't have a guest for tonight, and, uh, you know, we didn't want to kind of go to the... the I guess the trouble of finding one because I don't get a chance to talk to Jerry all that much on camera. Uh, so we figured it'd you know, be cool to talk about a few different topics. Um, we also felt that, you know, because we're running out of shows here on the East Coast, um, you know, because I'm moving to Los Angeles in two weeks. Um, so we figured, hey, you're, you're not. You're not, yeah. So, but, you know, that, that actually brings to mind exactly what I wanted to talk about and um, with you specifically, Jerry, is, and, and the audience as well. Um, I wanted to talk about collaboration. I wanted to talk about um, why. <laughs> I want to talk about kind of like why you and I actually work well together. And, and I guess maybe I should I should uh, preface that by by asking you, do you think we work well together? <laughs> For some reason, we do. And what do you attribute it to? Uh, <coughs> the bonds of friendship. Fuck that. Um, no, I think that a lot of it has to do with the fact that you and I don't live together and that we, we spend a lot of time apart. And I think that that keeps our, our friendship fresh, but I also think that it keeps me from killing you. Because it's hard to collaborate with a dead person. Okay. That, that's an interesting insight. So you're saying that if we live together, so if I came out to L.A. with you and was on your couch, we would not be able to collaborate together I as well as we do now. Uh, I, I think it would depend on the amount of time that you decided that you were going to be on the couch. So, like, if you were going to be, it would be different, like, if you, we lived in an apartment and you had, like, your own space, you know, but, like, that would be fine because you could at least, like, go to your room, as it were. Uh, whereas, like, if you're just crashing in my place or, like, you know, when we're in a hotel room or something together and, like, our plans intersect, you know, like, I have no choice but to take you with me somewhere or something like that, you know what I mean? That's when I want you to die. Or, like, when we're in a car for 32 hours driving to Orlando. Exactly. Um, you need, when that happens, you need to die. Um... You know, I, I, I hope he fucking dies in that Walmart. Like, I so want... Uh, when you're in that Walmart, I wake up from my and little nap. you're like, maybe I should drive away. Yeah, totally. I'm just like, I'm just like it, would be, it would take so little to just, you know, to just drive, just to go and leave you here. And, you and then know. I text you, and I'm just like, I'm picking up some candy, and you're like, okay, I'll let him come this time. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you get one more, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and, and actually, someone, uh, it looks like Devin Watson was saying... Uh, you know, is Justin TV broke, having issues logging into the chat? Yeah, folks, uh, if, if yeah. for some reason... I don't think there is even a... Is there a show? Are there, are there people that are able... Devin, if you're watching, could you tweet us and let us know that the show is playing? Because I can't get the show to, like, actually show up on my screen. Like, I can't watch any of the video. Yeah, um, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead real quick, and I'm going to see if I can get um, to our actual Justin TV... Um, uh, what do you call it there? Our pay, our Justin TV page, and see if it's broadcasting from there. Because it could just be an issue with their um, their uh, delivery system, like they're in bed. Because I haven't changed anything, so it's definitely them. Um, and and we seem to be recording fine on our end. So um, we'll just see what happens here. Waiting for Justin TV to load on that side. Uh, while we're waiting, though, <coughs> it looks like uh, do, 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 do. let's see here. All right. Yeah, it's it, it's it's weird. It, we all <coughs> in the long history of film snobbery live over the past couple of years, one thing this show has definitely become known for is having ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of technical issues. 
and most of them are not our fault. And I hate that. I'm looking forward to going to a place where um, there's so many more things that you could screw up on your own. Totally, exactly. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I love to go to a place where somehow I can be the asshole. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even able to get to, let's see, uh, Justin TV slash, I don't know if it's Justin TV slash Film Snobbery or Film Snobbery Live. You might have to uh, help me out with that. Why don't you try both? I, I am. I'm actually trying both right now. Yeah, they're this page... riveting stuff for the people watching me. Oh, it's, it's riveting, isn't it? Um, this, is, this is a thriller. Yeah, I think really, Justin... Really solve the issue. <laughs> well, I think Justin TV is down, and if that's the case, you know, whatever. We still have a show to do, so we're going to continue to, to talk. Well, what was great is that tonight was going to be the show where we have the audience call in and discuss what the audience wants. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so I well, guess, I guess it's, it, it's good that we don't have a guest, because then you'd have to be like, yeah, there's no show right now, but there'll be an archive. Yeah, totally. Um, and it looks like, who? I'm sure that this is a, uh, let's see here. Okay, yeah, no, nothing important. I, I thought I had a direct message on Twitter too, and obviously not. So, anyways, um, so uh, regarding collaboration, like, do you find it difficult? Because you're both a writer and a director. Do you find it difficult to collaborate with people? Like, to take what other people say to to heart when you're creating something? Not if I don't think their idea is like. That good, like I mean, if if it's a good idea, I, I I run with it. But if it's like a really stupid idea, sometimes that hurts. Now, like you know, expanding and ending in an unnecessary way, or throwing in stuff for the sake of like that's what producers will like. Right. Not to get specific or anything. No, not to get specific <laughs> or anything. But I mean, like, say, I mean, do you? What is your criteria for? Uh, saying whether or not something is good or bad. Like, I mean, do you, um, what is your, what, like, you know, I mean, do, do, do you look at it as, oh, well, it either fits or doesn't fit the, uh, it either fits or doesn't fit what the, the story calls for, or that it doesn't, um, you know, or, or is it mostly just personal taste, or, I mean, how do you divorce yourself from the decision? Well, like, I mean, I, I've received some <coughs> Really terrible feedback. Like I'm gonna, I'll just be honest, open and honest with this. With uh, Funny Devils, right? Uh, I, it was recently optioned by a director, Nick Peterson, and he's been getting some feedback from producers. So he's been sending me some of the feedback. And he's like, maybe we should listen to this. And some of the ideas have been kind of good. Um, some have actually like this. I think the script is much stronger now than when he optioned it, uh -huh. based on feedback we've gotten and based on some of his feedback. But some of the ideas were garbage. Like they were really, like they didn't make any sense. They didn't fit the film. Like it was changing what the film was and it would have like, and it wasn't even for the better. Like it wasn't even like to make it more marvelous. Like the, the idea was just a really bad idea that didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But I was able to like kind of tweak it and then play around with it. And then I fit it in by changing some other things and it actually made it stronger. But it, like the original idea, like the, the criticism was like, like I'm trying to think of like a specific example of it, but like there was just like a, one weird idea where they were like, well, why don't you do this? And, then you, and that was what one of the producers said to him. So he was just like, well, why don't we try doing this? And I was like, I don't see any reason for, for doing this. But then I played around with that idea and I expanded on it. I, I kind of uh, was like, well, what I can do this if I do this. <laughs> And it kind of made it made sense in that way, and I actually ended up liking how it turned out. Right. But the original feedback just didn't make sense for the the way the script was. Right. And uh, like, but if, if I, I'm I'm kind of good with that. Like, I'm willing to take feedback even if I don't think it's that good, and now, just try to make it make sense of it. Now here's like, I, that's why there's so many drafts of the script. Some of the drafts like really aren't that good, but they led to better things. But here's the thing. So. You're already, I mean, the, the story you were just telling is basically about a movie that you've already written. So, you know, it's been optioned and now you're basically doing rewrites based upon feedback. What about if you are in the process of writing something, a new idea? Like, have you ever, um, you know, I mean, with the exception, I know you come to me, obviously, and like WeChat, but now, what about like actually while you're going through the, the creative process? Like, you know, do you look well, at it? Rewriting is the part of the creative process. 
Yeah, but you already you're already working with something at that point. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like the, here's you're starting from you know fucking page you know fade in page one. You know what okay. I'm saying? So at that point, do you feel uh, more uh, guarded against feedback because it's not there's not even anything on the page yet, or do you feel more of like um, you're more open to feedback or or uh, or, or opinion because to, to be honest, I, I'm. I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of more open to feedback. Well, I'm not, I wouldn't say more open because I am open to feedback no matter like what. But like, here, here's what I do. I don't know if like other writers do this, but like even when I was do, doing the rewrites on Funny Devils, like I would do this from page one also. I'll write it my way. I'll write it their way. So if I'm getting feedback that I don't necessarily agree with, I'll write my version of it and then I'll write their version of it. And then I can, you know, if they're open to reading both, I'll send them both. And then if not, like, I'll give them the version that, you know, that has this, the feedback they wanted. And I'll just keep the other version for myself. Like, I was doing that, again, with some of the feedback I was getting from, from Nick. I, I was, uh, when I was doing the rewrites, like, there, there are, like, so many different drafts of Funny Devil saved on my computer. And, like, sometimes it would just have, like, a, a few lines changed. Right. And that, but that would be, like, just saved as a different draft because I'm like, I like the, the way, like, this is phrased better. And this one, they like this one better. So I think during the original, the, like, the, when I'm <coughs> starting the script, like, starting from page one with a new script, a new idea, I would write my way and then I'll write it their way. Like, I, I'm, I'm really open to collaboration and stuff. And especially, like, if their way gets the movie made, like, if their way gets money, in our hands to actually make them great. And I'll, I'll, you know, I, I'm open to going their way with it as long as I can, like, kind of make it fit. Like, as long as, long as it, like, fits in some way. Like, if their idea, their suggestion was, like, this, this movie's really good where there's psycho killers chasing these people, but at the end, I think aliens should kidnap them. Right. Then I'll be like, no, that's, that's, you know, retarded. That doesn't make any sense. Or, like, a giant spider in the third act. Exactly. Yeah. But if like if you can if it like if you could work with it and it doesn't like really hinder the film and it doesn't really like it, it like it, it may not add to the film but if it doesn't take away from the film I'm willing to you know take the feedback take the suggestions and, and go with it like I mean I, I, I'm gonna be honest the the current draft of Funny Devils I actually like a, the previous draft a little bit better and the only real difference is is an extension at the end. And I, I've been honest with, you know, the, the, the director of, it, of the film. I've been honest with, like, some of the producers I've I, talked to. And I'm like, I like this version better, but if this version is the one that we're going to get made, let's go with this one. Because it's not a bad ending. It's just I, I like the other one a little bit more. Right. So, but it's, it's collaboration. I, I know that this script, if this script gets, is picked and we end up making this movie, it's still going to change from the way the script is right now. Oh, sure. The, uh, the actors are going to make changes to it. You know, we'll probably have to make changes due to the special effects. The, uh, whatever producers we come on board are going to want to make changes to it. So the, the, the filmmaking is a creative and collaborative process. Like, 100%. Like, <coughs> unless you... you're making the film 100% by yourself, where it's starring you and you're the, you, you're the only crew and, like, it's a really boring movie about you talking to your camera alone, then, like, then you can go nuts and do whatever, but it's always going to be collaborative. Or if you if make a movie... If you take another person on board, it's collaborative. Right. So, and that's why I, I kind of like, that's one of the things I like about shooting digital is that it's a lot cheaper than, you know, burning film stock and stuff. Because with digital, you can have all these different takes of different versions of something. Like, uh, that's, that's one of the, the, the great things, that you can have so many uh, variations of things. So even when you're shooting something, you can have the actors say a line ten different ways, you can throw in different lines and stuff. So you, it's... The collaboration doesn't end until like you have a finished edit of the film, right. and even then, people have been re-releasing films and you know directors cut DVDs and shit. So the, the film is like constantly going through changes, and it's constantly a collaborative process. Fair enough. That was that was a very long explanation for a very short question. Yeah, well, I'm trying to fill an hour. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Good call. Um, and, and by the way, we did get confirmation. It looks like Justin TV is a bit on the fritz, but if you go to Justin TV, uh, Justin TV slash Film Snobbery, uh, you can at least view the stream. Um, although the chat room on Justin TV seems to be down, so uh, 
If you could tweet us your questions. You could comments. tweet us. That's a very good idea, uh, Jerome. Uh, you could tweet you. us at uh, twitter.com slash film or twitter.com slash get stuck. Now, I, here's, now we're, we're, one of the things we wanted to uh, kind of talk about, I guess, too, was you know we're moving, or by we, I mean film snobbery, not you, uh, is moving, Jerry. And um, you know we're leaving in two weeks, hopping in the car. My car's actually finally being repaired as we speak. I'm so happy. Uh, because I want my car back, basically, um, and I'm really looking forward to kind of, you know, getting it packed and, and starting to get, um, you know, get everything kind of together for the move. So I guess my question is, uh, when we get to L.A., what do you feel, Jerry, is the first thing we should do? I like how the whole thing you were like, I'm moving, but not Jerry's moving. But when we get to LA, what should we do, Jerry? <laughs> the yeah. way you phrase it just made it sound like. I know. It's, it's, I'm always so like about the royal we. Because I've got so many plans in my head of stuff that I want to accomplish. I, or I don't like that too. Even like, I'm just like, oh yeah, we're working on like re releasing stuff like Chuck. And I'm like, no, I'm working on it. I'm literally <laughs> the only person doing that. <laughs> it's so literally it's like, yeah, called. Because like, we just make it sound like, oh, you have other people. Right, right. And, and we're, Jerry and I were. There's collaboration. Jerry and I were talking last night at like 5 o'clock in the morning. We're like in fits of giggles where we're just like, I would love to make a movie with Jerry because it would be like a film snobbery productions, LLC production of, it, it, no, it, no, it, what was it? Productions. In association, in association with. <laughs> <laughs> right, in association with, because Jerry, yeah, Jerry's uh, uh, production company is called On My Own Productions. So, yeah, I'm, <laughs> that to me is, that was gold. Gold, that, Jerry, that, gold. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> worth investing $100,000 into making our comedy, action, thriller idea. Suspense, that crime. Like a oh, yeah, totally. I, I, the best ideas uh, came last night around th between 3 and 5 a.m. where Jerry and I were just throwing shit out about stuff. And when, honestly, I don't want us to talk about, like, the ideas. Yeah, no, we shouldn't do that because it's actually a pretty decent idea. It is. I, I would... might be coming up with a greeting card company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there's that one too. I totally, you know, it's funny. I forgot about that one. Um, yeah, well, it's okay because I have it all recorded. <laughs> but yeah, do you ever do you ever go back and actually listen to those conversations? No, never. No, never. I, I, I have like 500 hours of conversation recorded, and I'm like, I need to go back and listen to this and like categorize. This. Like, um, like between, like I would love to hear the first conversation you and I ever had on Skype. I have that. I know you do, and that's why I'm saying I would love to hear it at some point. Like, I, if, I, you should send it to me so you know we can just hear the awkwardness. You should cut to, I should cut together like a best of Nick and Jerry off air audio like series. I wonder. I was gonna say like I wonder how long we could do a podcast for. How many years a podcast we could have that would run based on old conversations you and I had. Like just like it's an hour long podcast, but all of the shit we talk about has already happened. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, it's all like, it's like two, three years in the past until the point where like It'll it finally like catches minutes. up. The, the first couple of seasons of it will be like, I feel big things are happening for stuff like Chuck. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And then the next year's, ah, oh, man, so many great things are going to be happening for stuff like Chuck too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's going to be a whole year of us discussing how great this movie is going to be. And, you know, the one that I'm still working and then, And then not only that, like your descent into darkness. Um, like every time I talk There's to you, that you just get where I just wasn't even on Twitter or anything. Oh yeah, you just get progressively depressed. more depressed, you know. <laughs> I should just cut that together and then just like transcribe that and release a book. <laughs> no kidding, right? The like real life of an indie filmmaker. Oh, totally. Uh, although we'll have to, y there's a lot of shit you'd have to cut out from our conversations that are, let's call it personal. <laughs> And we're like, fuck dead hole, fuck this guy, fuck this guy, fuck all this stuff, and fuck this lady, and all these other people. Uh, yeah, what, what? <laughs> did, you did you see the trailer for that guy's new movie? Oh, that sucked. what it's a, gonna be horrible. What a <laughs> fucking piece of garbage. <laughs> and then like a year later, it's like, holy shit, I can't believe that guy's in Hollywood. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is kind of like it is funny to kind of go back and listen to like yourself in the moment. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah. So we're you know, back to my question. What do you think is the first thing that I should do when I bring film snobbery to Los Angeles? Yeah, that was a that was a question. Uh, yeah. yeah. What's the first thing you should do? Um, 
Eat it in and out burger. Okay, I can see that. Um, I would literally just try to make a name for yourself, down there. like kind of like. Like, how would you do that? Like, should, just go. Like, should I be like a black dahlia killer? Go people are, man. No, I would. I would uh, try to go to like screenings and stuff down there and just socialize with as many like like-minded people as you can that you can bring onto the show and try to bring like a new audience to the show because now you're going to be like kind of where so many indie filmmakers are and a lot of people don't realize this but tons of indie filmmakers are in LA. Oh like, yeah. They flock to LA because they think they're going to be accepted into Hollywood and that doesn't happen too often. Yeah. I love that we have our foot kind of in you know, our feet and kind of in both worlds. Like, I get invited to a lot of industry stuff, and by industry I mean like the Hollywood industry stuff already, um, but I just don't, I, you know, I'm not there, so I can't go to a lot of it, but yet we also do a lot, so much, you know, in the way of uh, indie film stuff, and I'm looking forward to connecting out, you know, with those people out there, like Zach and, you know, uh, Bill and all those kind of people, you know, uh, Ty, Destry, uh, uh, Daron, Daron uh, Amber, you know, I mean, there's so many people. Uh, Mike Rotman, if you guys have never watched Mike Rotman's Stupid for Movies which, from Streaming Garage, great show, great set of shows, <clears throat> good guy, you know, uh, Kevin Pollock chat show, all that kind of stuff, he produces that as well. I mean, there's so many people out there, it's like I know them, but I've never met them. You know, I mean, I just recently met Zach Forsman, and I was just like, Zach Forsman, you know? And He's then, like, oh, and then the worst in person, Nick. And then, like, out of the fucking shadows, Gregory Bain stepped in, I was like, ah, oh, Gregory Bain! You know, it was like it was that that was that was a moment for me. I really, you know, where I kind of felt like a, a little. So you're gonna walk into a bar and it's gonna be like Nathan Cole, Blake Weaver, Paul Osborne, Chris Gore. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, no kidding, right? Like I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I've Am had. Am I dreaming? <laughs> Am I dreaming? Is this my show? Like, is this where I go to hell? Like when I die, you know, is my my personal hell? Like just every person I've ever interviewed is is somehow. Goes up and they're like, you did nothing for my career, Nick. Pretty much. Much. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, oh, and Zach, speaking of Zach Forsman, Zach says uh, it's a film shot. It's not really that. Um, Justin.tv is having issues. Go to HTTP. Justin.tv slash film snobbery. Chat won't work, but stream. Add out to is fine. Well, no one pay attention to <clears throat> Well, you, why don't you go ahead and throw that out there because I'm uh, obviously, um, yes. Did you just send that out to that for me? Uh, yes, I did. And, and Dolly says, witnessing film snobbery sans the chat. In, I'm in my underwear. Good times. Yes, it is. So. It's always good times when you're in your underwear. If I could do this show in my underwear, like if I was in, if I was fit, I'm doing it in my underwear. Right I now. know you are. I, I figured like like one of us is. Fifty percent of film snobbery is in their underwear right now. <laughs> I, 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 if I had like a decent body, like if I felt confident in my body, I would totally do like an underwear show. Like I totally would do that. But the problem is, is that I didn't feel comfortable in my body, and I did <laughs> underwear for my uh, Indiegogo pitch video. I and remember that blew up big time. So maybe you shouldn't feel comfortable. <laughs> That's true. Jer Jerry in his underwear is very funny. Like I, in underwear in general. Like uh, Jerry and I have shared a hotel room on a couple of occasions now, and you should have seen like the first time. Like I kind of, yeah, I was changing, but I was changing kind of in front of him, and I don't think anything of it because in my mind it's like the the gym mentality. Like you know, guys in a gym, they just shower in front of each other, they change. It's a locker room mentality, you know. So I don't think anything of it, and it's funny because Jerry seemed like really uncomfortable, and I was just like, really? And it's funny because you have a brother on top of it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I. Would think I don't that, watch him change either. <laughs> I just, but it, to me, <laughs> like at, separate rooms. Yeah, but I mean, at some point in your lives, I would have to assume that it's like you know because you You're grew like, up with you guys. You know, naked, right? Well, well, <laughs> not, not like that, but I'm just saying, like you know, you. Um, and the funny thing, I was in the Boy Scouts. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> no, but my, I still remember there was this one time. It was so weird in the Boy. We had to do. Um, because there was like the summer camp where you can go for you go for a week and get, and get like extra merit badges and shit like that. And it was like a whole, they have like this uh, this place that like all the Boy Scouts from like New York, New Jersey, they all go to this one place for the summer camp. And 
there's the pool like area and there's like all these nerve edging in the pool. And I still remember like everyone is kind of like kind of uncomfortable changing, but like no everyone wears like wears a bathing suit like underneath the, the scout uniform pants. Right. Because you have to show up everywhere in your scout uniform, but then you can change there to whatever you need for the activity. Right. And like I remember like everyone just pulls their pants and they all have like the bathing suit on underneath. And there's just one kid who just pulls his pants down completely naked and he's just walking around like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, obviously his parents taught him no shame. But the f other funny part about that too is like, not only do you have, you grow up with a brother, but you also grow up with your dad and stuff like that. So you had guys around. I didn't. Not Jim Jean either. Well, I'm just saying, like, I never, um, yeah, I didn't grow up with like guys around. Like, I, you know, so like for me, you would think it'd be like extra uncomfortable, you know what I mean? But like, it's, I don't know. It's just maybe I, I'm just, Weird. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm the strange one. But, you know, and it wasn't like that. To be fair, it wasn't like I was whipping my dick out. Like, I had boxers on, you know? So it wasn't even like briefs. I was wearing boxers. And so, like, I didn't think anything of it, you know? So it was just, you know, because what, what are bo boxers basically are, they're, they're like, they're like swimming, you know, what are they? The swimming they're like short bathing suits. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I don't know. I don't think about it. But, no, so... I, mean, I, I don't really mind. It's just, it was, like, so, like, a suit to you, know, you, like, just pull your pants down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It wasn't right when we got there. Don't make it sound like I got in the room and I was just like, so, Jerry, zip. <laughs> the guy who showed us the room is still there, Nick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like, I told you, you know, to... Your tip, I was going right? to say, I told you to tip him. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh. And speaking of hotels, we we've always had decent hotels. Like that Portofino was the shit. Yeah. That, that's what was the other we one we stayed at. That we don't pay. For, like we have decent hotels when we don't pay, and when we do have to pay, we sleep in the car. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's, we're we're very cheap that way. Uh, also broke. Um, <laughs> would you call it cheap or broke? Uh, choke. Ch ch choke. Right. We're we're cheap and broke. We're choked. Yeah. We're choked. There we go. Yeah, it, it's it's. I mean. Sleeping in the car sucks, but it's like an acceptable, you know, like, uh, alternative. Um, I, 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 I'm, I don't know. Like, my, it's funny. Like, I'm looking at my trip that I'm going to be taking uh, out west. I'm starting in, like, central Massachusetts. I'm going to drive, like, two, three hours to a friend's house in Troy, New York. And then I'm driving to another friend's place out in Albany, New York. And then I'm going to um, Worcester, Worcester, Ohio to visit another friend and then another friend, you know, group of friends in Chicago. Just to get to that point, that's like gonna be like a two day trip right there because of all the stops, you know what I mean? Like I'll probably stay overnight in, in Ohio because of, you know, it's my friend and I know we're gonna get out and probably get wasted and I don't wanna drive drunk obviously. Um, sure. And then when I get to um, Chicago, I know enough people in Chicago where it's like, ah oh, man, you know, maybe I should, um, take a little bit of extra time here, you know, especially like I have some friends that are getting married in June, I think, June or July um, in Chicago that I'd really like to go see. And I'm trying to set something up with them, but I haven't been able to get a hold of them. So kind of a pain in the ass. But um, and then once I go there, then I'm heading south to um, I'm heading south to Kansas, Manhattan, Kansas, to visit uh, my other uh, good friend, Paul uh, Bassetti, a filmmaker. We've had him on the show. He's also kind of co-hosted and, and uh, been a, uh, an extra on uh, things I didn't learn in film school, which I would love to hear more of. Hopefully, if uh, Francis Abbey and Jerry Dennis and Paul Bassetti they all hear this. They invited me on that show. They're like, when we come back, we're going to have you on the show. And I think that might be one of the reasons why they haven't come back in. <laughs> that was like a year ago. I want that. I, I totally want. I lo I love listening to them because a it's people I like and I respect, and I I they have good ideas. Yeah, it's a good show. It's it's usually a really good show. It's like one of the only other film shows that I can listen to for an extended period of time, and not just because we put it out, like we produce it. It's just because I love the people involved. You know what I mean? Um, and and it's and it's not just like the typical interview show kind of. I mean, I hate to say we're typical, but we kind of are. You know, the only thing that kind of sets us apart from a lot of other shows is the fact that we do video. Um, but you know, even then, just due to our. I like think our personality has added something to the table. Personality, you know, yeah, per, you know, that always helps. Um, <laughs> like Conan's just another interview show, but it's Conan. So that is true. Like yeah, but, yeah, that, that, that's true. I mean, I like some of the, I like a lot of the like the little sketches and stuff they do too. Yeah, all right, I'll go with that. But like, yeah, all the shows are the same. Like Jimmy Fallon, you know, uh, 
Leno, Kimmel, Letterman, Letterman. they all, they have the opening monologue, they have the sketch, they have the interview and stuff. It's all really based on the personality of the person hosting. Craig Ferguson, I shouldn't leave him out, but he's great. I, should, I agree so, with that. I hear you. All right, well, cool beans. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. that's what we bring to the table. We bring video and our charming personalities. Yes, my charming Which personality. I'm not bring to the table anymore, but you fired me. <laughs> yeah. You always have to make it seem so harsh. Like I just, yeah. I shit canned you hard. Like I made the call. You did. You literally shit. You the day you came back, I'm like, hey, how was Sundance? You're like, good. You're fired. And I was like, yeah, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, talk good, talk bad. And you were like, oh, good for me. Yeah, I was like, I was like, Jerry, um, I love you, but I want to see other co-hosts. <laughs> totally. Totally. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> So after I leave, you know, uh, uh, Kansas, I'm going to Colorado Springs, and then Colorado Springs to Vegas, Vegas to L.A. Um, I had an offer to go to San Francisco, but I think I might have to put that off for, like, maybe, like, a weekend trip or something like that, uh, because it's something I really want to do, and uh, people I You're really want to see. stuck but. in Vegas. But if I were stuck with, in Vegas, I would be with our friends. I would, be with, I would be with Sean and Charlotte. True. So I wouldn't hate that. <laughs> well, I was saying, you end up stuck in Vegas, like you go to Vegas and you're like, well, let me turn this Indiegogo money into double the money. 5000 on red, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to take a chance on the indie film community. Yeah. Like, yeah, 5000 on red. It's like, oh, what? Oh, fuck. <laughs> and then you're like, and then you have to, then you'll have to do that shameful video and you're like, okay, everybody. Um, we have another. I lost all of your money. <laughs> I haven't even gotten to LA yet. That, uh, that would be funny. It's going to look good for film snobbery. I've had to sell the domain for a place to stay. <laughs> I sold the business. Weekly, that's when like, most of our audience turns to each other. It's just like, told you. <laughs> well, I want to actually, I'll go ahead and I'm going to put up um, right here on the, the, uh, the show right now our little Indiegogo. Um, there we go. Boom. Indiegogo. Uh, Little Great way to graphic. say me into a bitch. Me saying that you're gonna <coughs> you're gonna lose all the money in Vegas. And yeah. Like, oh yeah, ha, 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 ha. everyone donates my money. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's actually and uh, the graphic on this is actually out of date. We're actually doing a lot better than uh, what was it at fifteen hundred before? I think we're at, at uh, I, Jerry. Get me a live count, but I think we're at, like right now. Nice. Indiegogo.com slash moving forward. Yes. $1,895. Booyaka. He's left. B&D. Yep. B&D. <laughs> you just added that at the end, didn't you? Yeah, because I saw B&D. Nice. On the nice. B&D. Um, yeah, man, so that we're... That should be something we, like, say, since that's, like, the shirts and everything. <laughs> I would think that that would be... Well, we do say it, but, I mean, do you think that that should be, uh, like, the sign-off of the show? Like, you know, Kevin like, Smith has... JerryKevinLive.com or StuckLightTrack.com? I should say B&D. Exactly. So it should just be, like, it should be, you know, it's like, instead of Kevin Smith going, like, all right, everyone have a week, you know, it should be like, you know, and remember, kids, b and you know, type of deal, you know what I mean? Usually you end up saying, like, save that time, save that channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, because... That Bat hasn't been done to death or... But, but the problem is, though, or the, rather the, the thing is, is that Batman is universal to everybody. Everybody loves Batman. Who doesn't love Batman? You can insert Batman into absolutely any conversation, you know, you know it, or something in the Batman mythos. You know, you could be having a, a, uh, a discussion about, you know, uh, someone is just like, yeah, well, you heard his dad died. I'm like, and he's going to be Batman. <laughs> To avenge his father, and it's, it's, it's like well, and Jesus, Batman and Jesus is this is is that a uh, no? It's as if Batman then Jesus, Batman then Jesus then Martin Luther King Jr. Um, <laughs> I don't know what where we went with that. Is it, I, I, you were saying like how Batman is like your I think what what was it that I, I was surprised? I think they said like it was Super Mario is the most recognized person worldwide. Or it, it was like, it, or it was, because uh, Batman was on the list. There was like a list of the, the, oh, the, the most recognized right. people like throughout the world. And it was mostly fictional people. It, all, it always and, made me like uh, giggle. There was that one that, what was it, Morgan Spurlock supersized me, where there's that one scene where he is showing a bunch of pictures of brands to kids. Yeah. 
and like Jesus comes up, he's like, I don't know who that is. You know, yeah. Ronald McDonald, kid. And then they show the yeah, Ronald McDonald there. <laughs> kid knows it cold. That's why I mean, because I, I mean, I used to eat a lot of McDonald's. I don't eat as much anymore, and and I wouldn't say because of that that movie, but I think that just because of a lot of different factors. Um, but I think that that movie did you know contribute. Um, but the whole thing is is just like. I used to know that menu cold, right to left, left to right. Like, you know, it's just like... Well, the problem is they're always changing it, too. McRib. Remember the McRib, yeah. sir? Oh, that was fun. I know, like, Jerry and I have a great conversation, a little back and forth from when we went to a Panda Express one time together uh, at uh, in Orlando. But we have just as great a story at um, at uh, uh, for the McRib. I wouldn't say it's just as great a story. It's less disgusting. Yeah, like... What was the story? We just basically, we, we kept saying we got to go to McDonald's, we got to go to Fire. Finally, we went, we found McDonald's in a Walmart. And we were like, well, I'm so hungry, I can get a McDonald's in a Walmart. So we went up there. <laughs> <laughs> and like, they had a special, it was like, buy one McRib, get one for a dollar. So I got two McRibs. Because I've never had the McRib before. And you're like, you have to have it. And because like, we, because I kept saying like, we have to get a McRib because like, they don't have them. And you got, you got two of them. Yeah, I got. Yeah. Well, buy one get one for a dollar. So I said, of course, I got two. But now you didn't. You didn't. Uh, if I, but I. Why do I have a, a, a recollection that you didn't feel good afterwards, or like you? you we, both we, rushed to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that delicious. recollection is pretty correct. Okay. Yeah, but it was delicious though. <laughs> but now, didn't. <laughs> See, now, now it's getting to the disgusting territory. But like. So should we I, just? I came out and I was like. It was green. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And we're like, <laughs> happy uh, St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy a McRib and a shamrock shake. <laughs> and, 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 and if it's green, you'll be like, I guess it is a shamrock shake. No, no it's not at all. And, and, uh, and, and the other story, um, have we actually ever... Um, Went into detail on the pandas, but I don't know that one was. That was a little extreme, but the, the funny That's part. Extreme for air. I don't know though, like the 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 payoff of that though, not just with the the bathroom thing, but like the the other part, like the texting, and then later on at the theater, like that for me brings that story together and makes it worth it. But I think it might be a little much for for the audience, even though I just pretty much told the whole story. Yeah, now, um, now like the audience is like, oh, we want to hear this story. And they're like, no, suckers. Uh, <laughs> didn't we go into detail? Oh no, we didn't. I don't I just, remember. Like, you came back. I, I don't know. We might have. I'll tell you what. If, if we're at eighteen hundred ninety-five dollars, if we get by the end of the show, if we get the other five dollars to get us to nineteen hundred, we will tell the disgusting story of the Panda Express uh, adventure. I'll really feel like Louis C.K. then. Yes. It's like, yeah. give us some money and I'll tell you a dirty joke. <laughs> it totally is, right? That's <laughs> that's what this is. I mean, we never charge for our podcast, so I think that I think that um, you know, basically, if you want, it's almost like we're you know, if you want to hear the good parts of the of the stories that we're going to tell, you got to give money. So. <laughs> Um, but no, I, we've got some great plans uh, coming out to LA. Um, one of the things, we are going to start our screening series back up. We have a few uh, things lined up for that as well to, uh, to kind of hopefully bring in not only audiences but great movies as well. So um, I'm looking forward to developing that. Uh, Jerry and I have been talking a lot about um, you know, something that he, uh, Jerry and I have been talking a lot about. It. I'm hoping that Jerry will start contributing more on the site in terms of like editorial and stuff because I kind of I laid out to him a, a bit of our plan going forward for the website as well, and he kind of seemed to dig that too. Um, it sucks that like I can't go into full detail on all of the plans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because as much as I want to, because it's just like <clears throat> I can't give stuff away while it's not it's done. A secret. Well, it's not even a secret. It's just like I'm one of those people like I don't like making promises you know for things. Work yeah, it's, exactly. Well, no, I know they'll happen, but I don't want to make promises that I or say things that I can't back up. You're like I'm just not that guy. So you know, I, I, unless I'll, it's like talking to me, where you're like, yeah, buy the domain. We'll have the website running in two months, and I've had the domain for a year and a half. 
Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, you unbeknownst to even you, Jerry, I have made headway with that. I really have. Like I've done a lot of research on it. I've I've done I've talked to other people about it to gauge interest from the general populace. I've um, looked at different solutions for on the tech side of things. What I'm going to do, my plan is, I'll tell you exactly, uh, we have to be vague as to what the project is, but I'll tell Jerry kind of the thing so he'll, he'll get it. My plan is when I get out to LA, I'm going to find a programmer to work with, and then I'm also going to, while I'm there, create a business plan that I'm then going to pitch to a venture capital uh, uh, incubator. And um, I think at that point, we will get something that I think will will uh, will work because unfortunately folks this isn't a project I want to do for free because I know it's going to be uh, it's going to make money and I want to make sure that when we launch uh, it has everything it needs to um, to succeed as strong as we want it to so there um, but yeah and, and I want good one thing Maybe I, I'll actually make money on one of my ideas man. exactly we can make money on our our ideas what? Yes. Huh? You went out for like a second. I said maybe I'll finally make money on one of my ideas then. Yes, and I said yes, maybe we'll make money on one of our ideas. It was my idea. What? I suggested it and then we expanded it. What? Who said expanded? Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Um, but, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to like seeing a bunch of... Uh, Seeing a bunch of you guys out there, um, more you know, I'm, I want to see our new studio. I like this is my um, this might surprise you guys. I have not seen our new studio yet um, because it's just not. I haven't I haven't been there. You know, i have told we have a studio to use, and I've been told about some of the cool equipment Did they take and stuff. Pictures of it for you. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for that. Um, I think I think our buddy uh, Bill has been a little busy, so I haven't um, I haven't Who had an opportunity. Has Bill. Yeah, Bill, you're, you're killing me, man. You're killing me. No. <laughs> he's been really busy. It was funny. I was talking to him, and he, he uh, the last two times I talked to him, he's been on set at a uh, TV show that I actually watch. So I was just like, that's cool. Um, <laughs> Can you the cast members, please? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. 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 No, you should be like, okay, we all know that you're a big success and you have a successful crowdfunding campaign and you're going to make an awesome short, but really, you got to send us pictures of the studio. <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing what happens with Jedi Camp, because that looks like a good idea. Um, yeah, it'll be good stuff. And hold on a second. That's cool. I just got a tweet from 8-Bit St. Louis. Oh yeah. Remember I was telling you about that bar that's they're, that they're working on in. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Was, go ahead. Yeah, they, I, I go into a little bit of detail. I, I'll, well, I don't have a link, but I, you'll have to just look it up on Kickstarter though. But there's this bar. It's gonna be St. Louis's first geek bar, and they're gonna have like board games. They're gonna have like 15 or 20 classic arcade games like Pac-Man and stuff in there. They're gonna. It's gonna have like an 8-bit motif, and the place is actually called 8-bit. And uh, it's like it. It seems like a really cool place that like it would be like a fun place to hang out if I was in St. Louis. And uh, I found out about it because Kevin Smith actually donated 200 bucks and tweeted about it. And he donated the money and said, "Name a shitter after me." So they're <laughs> gonna do that. They're gonna name a bathroom stall after him. And uh, so now they're, they're they have a Kickstarter campaign going. And the campaign went from like a few thousand all the way up to like nine grand or something just based on like in one day kind of, or like two days because of what Kevin Smith, you know, tweeted about. So I found out about him. So I, I followed them and they got back to me and they were like, you know, we'd love to get some, we're going to do a movie night when, when the bar is like, if, if we reach our, our goal and the bar is set up, we want to screen like indie films. That, that would be good for our audience, like a geek movie night. You know, it's so, funny. We, uh, just real quick too, I want to bring up, because now we're talking a little bit about crowdfunding, not only our campaign, but other people's. Um, I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but Indiegogo changed their website recently. Like they did a whole site-wide upgrade. Uh, Jerry, you've got you've had a chance to look at it, right? Uh, briefly, I, I I didn't stick into the old format. Yeah, well, the, I don't think you have a choice now. I think they force you to the new one. Oh, I haven't. Well, actually, it, I just went and looked in your campaign. So yeah, it is the new one. Yeah, because they, they used to send you to beta dot uh, com. Now it, it fully redirects over to Indiegogo. Yeah, it, now, I so. mean it's pretty similar. I mean it's just a little bit. You know, the color scheme is different of it. Their logo looks a little different. Do, what do you, what's your overall kind of thing? Like, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I, 
I don't understand from a functional perspective why Kickstarter is so much more popular than Indiegogo, but I definitely think that Indiegogo has, um, it's almost like they have an identity crisis. Like, I look at their logo, and to me, I don't, I don't see how that relates to crowdfunding or even raising money or even, <laughs> I mean, I can see what they're doing with, like, the different colors and the intersecting. I mean, maybe they're, like, that's, like, an, we're all overlapping one type of thing, but, I, like... It seems it's like a bunch, it's a bunch of intertwined fingers shaking hands. <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's like it seems to me like Kickstarter has always been so straightforward. Now that said, I've always supported Indiegogo because I love the platform um, and the people behind it. But that said, like their marketing, like I don't understand what the fuck the problem is. Like why they can't seem to you know do it because they you know you go to any event, Kickstarter. I mean, uh, Indiegogo's there. So I don't know. They've all, they've got some really great projects on here too. But I, I haven't been to I haven't like done any like behind the scenes stuff on Indigo like recently, especially now with the update. Since I like lo- I'm you know checking out your campaign or anything, I haven't like gone into the actual back end of the campaign. Right. Have they done a thing where you could update just people who donate? No. That's one of the things. Yeah. Also, they don't do their own videos. You have to link the videos from other places. Right. right? Exactly. And, and I, I love that about Kickstarter, that you can do the updates only for people that back. So that way you can do private videos for, like, the people that donate and stuff like that. Right. And, yeah. yeah, that's one of the things that I still don't know why they don't do that. Yeah, I actually just uploaded today, as a matter of fact, on our Indiegogo campaign. I uploaded a new update. Um, it's a video that I did in the in the, our car, in the car that we're going to be traveling to uh, to L.A. And we're going to be traveling? By, yeah, uh, I'm going to be traveling to L.A. In, the Royal We, um, that we'll be traveling to L.A. In, and I wanted to kind of thank, I gave a, a bunch of thanks to a bunch of you guys that already uh, donated and, and all of that kind of stuff. And I actually want to... Um, I want to uh, say another thank you to everyone else who uh, has donated recently because we've got just so many, um, <clears throat> we've got a lot of backers now. I mean, we're, we're up to, I think it's like 39 backers. I'm actually going to go look at our... Uh, 39. Is I'm it thir- it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the page too now. Um, I'm going to thank a few people by name just because we have the time. So <clears throat> give me one second here. Yeah, 39 funders, 39 backers. Now, do you, what do you, I mean, I know this, now we're talking literally semantics, but what do you, what word do you like better, funder or backer? Um, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I really don't care. <clears throat> well, I want As long as I'm getting money from fans. Wow. I like fans better. That was kind of crass, wasn't it? No, I like fans better. <laughs> I understand. I, I, I don't know. I, I funder or back. I don't know. Funder or backer. That just makes it seem like. You know, I, I don't know. I like fans better. I, I don't. I go with backer. Like for me, backer is to me is a, a better term. I, I guess so. yeah, because funder makes it sound more business. Yeah, totally. And and I mean, even though like everything we've done has always been, with the exception of this show, obviously, has always tried to be more like business geared. Still, to me, saying funders sounds too. I, I guess backer is just like it got you back. They're, they're yeah, I like that. I, they got you got your back. I like that. That was that was good. See, this is why Jerry should be doing marketing for companies like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So I want to give some thanks to um, Michelle Simmons, Ken Flott, uh, Mona Larson, um, S. J. Hexner Marquis. Uh, that's a long name. Uh, the guy, the folks over at RealClever.com. Uh, those guys have always been um, really nice, and and they're uh, they're I believe they're Australian too. Um, I, and it's like we always try to. I've been saying for like two years now, like, oh yeah, we'll chat sometime soon. We never get around to it because of the time difference. Um, <clears throat> Nathan, like game, though. real clever. Yeah, I dig it too. Yeah, that's clever. Ha! <laughs> you see what they did there? Um, see what I did there? Yeah. Uh, Nathan Oliver, Kimberly Mazer, uh, MJ Slide, Sean Hackett, um, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to go through probably the last group that donated that hadn't gotten a shout out yet. Um, Gary Plosky, Sean Fallon. Um, and I think everything before that we've already we've already said thank you to. So uh, for the, all the new backers, I want to say thank you. Um, we're we're getting there. We have 17 days left. Um, we leave uh, if we get over 2,000. It, it, once we hit 2,000, um, the hard date is set for leaving on April 1st. That is that will be the hard date as long as we hit at least 2,000. You're going to leave on April Fool's Day? I'm leaving on April Fool's Day because only a fool would make this trip. And uh, I'm the fool for you. 
Um, and you should do that because remember when I made fun of myself with my campaign? That didn't work. If people didn't like that, but they don't get self-referential humor. Yes, but see, here's the thing. It's also you, and you're cursed. That's true. That's why I... I, still, I, I like the whole, like, there are people that are like, I didn't donate to your campaign because your $1,000 perk was... Uh, you're you're batshit crazy. You're you're like Gary Busey. You're batshit crazy enough to give me a thousand dollars. And people are just like, you shouldn't be saying that people are crazy for giving you money. And I'm like, what? Yeah. That's, that's, there's a joke in there. I guess it didn't go over well with you. But yeah, I've been like, fine. I understand. Can I have seven <laughs> fifty? So like, fine. Give me nine ninety nine. Yeah, I, I I hear you. I mean, it's it's. The there is an art form I think to asking for money from people, and it's like you do have to walk the line of, you know, and I think it definitely depends on the project, depends on the people, depends also on the visibility of that person. Like someone like uh, you know Kevin Smith could go try to raise money, and based on his you know his type of humor and style and the fact that people know him, he'd probably very easily be able to you know get away with being vulgar, or crass, or self-referential or anything like that, and people well, would get it. Well, the you have to, it's kind of like, in order for you to be able to make fun of yourself, you have to be, like, famous. Yeah. Like, it's, it's almost like, that's why Conan's allowed to make fun of how terrible his show is, or how low budget his show is and stuff. Because right. it's Conan. And it's like, okay, well, clearly he's, you know, joking, because he's famous, and he's yeah. wealthy, and the show is great. It was funny. But like, I, it's like, oh, like, but you gotta wonder, like, uh, you know, just look at, like, Robbie Dangerfield, right? He has the whole, I get no respect thing. Did he have that routine? Before he was Rodney Dangerfield, famous. Like, uh, did he have the "I get no respect"? Yeah, did, yeah, like, that, that was that was that. always part of his. Yeah, that was always part. Of it. How did he turn the "I get no respect" into everyone respecting him, but still being able to use the "I, I get no respect" and keep? And by the way, we got our extra five bucks. We're at nineteen hundred, so we have to tell the um, the Panda Express oh, story. Well, um, before we tell that, maybe I should finish the eight bit story. Uh, and yeah, but it, to me to go under the bus. Well, that's fine. Well, hold on. But related to what literally we were just talking about, uh, Devin Watson made a comment of if you're an established brand name, people know what they're going to get and have bigger reach. Okay, <laughs> I agree. I agree with that. I concur. Do you concur, Doctor? I concur. Doctor, you concur. I concur. Why didn't I concur? <laughs> I love that movie. I, I'm That's sorry. Such a good movie. I love that flick. Like I, I'm not really the, the largest Leonardo DiCaprio fan, but I really do love me some Catch Me If You Can. <laughs> and going back to you know, this is nothing to do with anything now. But the opening for the Adventures of Tintin, the title is very similar to the like the music and stuff, and just the way and a lot of people said it's similar to the Catch Me If You Can opening. So that might be a reason why you might uh, finally pop in the DVD. But going back to the 8-bit thing, really quick, because then I'll, we'll get to the vulgar story. Um, so yeah, they, they basically tweeted to me after like I, I followed them, and they were like, they, they said, we're thinking about doing a movie night. Do you have recommendations, and what do you think would be good for our audience and stuff? So I, I suggested Stuck Like Chuck, because they're, they're a geek bar. I'm like, that's perfect. And they, they, I found them through Kevin Smith, and I was like, this is, that's a perfect venue to screen. So they were like, uh, they wrote back and said, would love to keep in touch. I'd love to, po uh, to possibly do a screening of your film. And this could be a really good venue for a lot of independent films. Yeah. By the way, what, what's, their, um, what's their Twitter handle? It's 8BitSTL. So at 8BitSTL. And uh, so, so they, but they have, they, they're kind of, uh, they don't have too many followers. They, they've been getting more since the Kevin Smith tweet, but the, 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 it really looks like a cool place. You know, like I said, if, if I was in St. Louis, I would hang out at that place. So uh, that's why I just thought I'd bring it up, you know, check it out, promote it to your friends, whatever. And if you have a film that you think might be good for that venue, keep that in mind that if they reach their goal and they do finish the bar and everything, that would be a great place to screen some, like, fun, indie, geeky movies. Yeah, now that's not to say, don't throw, like, your depressing, fucking shitty drama stuff at them. 
Yeah. Like, if you've got a comedy... No bar. You yeah. want a bar crowd, but it's getting a little bit geekier. Yeah, use, yeah. use, your, oh. use your best judgment. So, um, <laughs> that was a little yeah. harsh, I think, but yeah. yeah. Like, okay, audience, I know you guys like to make your melodramas, but not for this place. Yeah, totally. Um, but let's... Uh, we're, we, we are getting... Uh, 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 from our friend here, Darren Levine, is, is requesting the Panda Express story. So... Um, so Jerry and I were in Orlando, and uh, you know, of course, Jerry was bugging me to go to you know some god awful place that we've already gone to eat thirty times because that's how Jerry is. He finds one thing he no. likes, and that's what he sticks with. And that's not true. and so I was like, oh no no, let's let's stop at Panda Express. They got a Panda Express here. I was willing to go to Panda Express because. I said I've never been to, and I wanted to, and you were like, it's so good, you have to have it. It so is I good. I agreed. I wasn't re- hesitant. I wanted to go to Steak and Shake, because I always want to go to Steak and Shake. That is true. But, have well, you been to I, the I one in Manhattan yet? I was like, okay, fine, I'll go to Panda Express, because I've, I've never eaten Panda Express. And you were like, I can't believe you've never eaten it. So don't, don't say I was like, oh, I didn't want to go there. But I, see, I, that, that makes the story better, though. <laughs> fine. Fine. Why right, let's lie for the sake of entertainment? Absolutely. Um, and by the way, we did get another backer too. So hold on, let's uh, let's go ahead real quick. We're at forty-one backers now. Uh, our good friend, oh man, Mark Lewis. That's cool. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> so nineteen twenty-five. We are seventy-five dollars away from being two thousand dollars funded. Which at two thousand dollars, we're five hundred dollars away from being fifty percent. So we're at forty-something percent right now. Seventy-five dollars, and we'll actually finish the story. <laughs> yeah, no, no. All right, so we're in Panda Express, and we both got our food. Um, I sat down. Um, Jerry was still ordering. I said, "Yeah, because yeah. I, like I said, I've never been there." So I'm like, I'm like Elaine at the counter of the soup Nazis place, where I'm tapping on the counter, looking at all the different stuff, and they're like, "You want to try this?" I was like, "Yes, I do." So I, I, <laughs> That's very good. Let's let's also I call that. let's also call a spade a spade on this one too. I guarantee you, you were looking at goddamn prices too because you are cheap bastard. Yeah, prices are pretty much all the same. It's it's pretty much it's like you choose two orders and these things are an extra dollar. To get. Right. And I ended up splurging because the oh, one chicken. The treat yourself. So good. <laughs> treat so yourself. Ate, all right. I treated myself <laughs> and I paid an extra dollar for the walnut chicken. So, all right. So anyway, so we got, we got, I, I got my food and I went and I got us our table and I put like one bite of orange chicken into my mouth, chewed it, swallowed, and then I was just like, oh, I, uh, I have to hit the bathroom. I'll be right back. So, so I was like, it's okay. I'm almost done. I'll come well, to the table and I'll look over your food. So right. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. So I go into the bathroom, and needless to say, it was an experience. Uh, clean bathroom, not like there was anything bad about the bathroom itself. It was actually, I was actually really impressed with the cleanliness uh, for a fast food place. So, uh, you know. for how the story ends, you were surprised that it's such a I food. destroyed that bathroom <laughs> um, uh, with my anal explosion, um, which, again, good, great college band name, anal yeah, explosion. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> So, if you got a garage band and you're considering a great name, Anal Explosion is the way to go. So, now here's the thing: I'm in there for you know doing my. Thing. I'm a big guy, so it takes me a little bit of time. And uh, but while I'm in there, like 20 minutes. I <laughs> you have to tell them that part. So, I'll, I'll come in because this is my part, kind of. Um, so I, I get my food and everything. Nick's in the bathroom, maybe like three or four minutes at this point. I get my food, go to the table, I sit down, I get everything set up, take a single bite out of my food, and then immediately just feel my stomach just like exploding. Like I just get this rumbling in my stomach, and I'm like, oh my god. So then I'm like, I can't leave the food because like I don't want to just leave my food in the middle and go to the bathroom. Right. And then Nick's like, it's only one stall. Yeah, it was a it was a single bathroom. It wasn't like a. And I was like, oh shit. So I'm like, how long are you gonna be? And you're like, I'm gonna be in here a while. <laughs> oh, dude, I was dying. Uh, like, like I left that bathroom, my f- pants fit better. Like I, I yeah. You a pants up. I lost weight taking that shit. So you lost an organ. Uh, dude, I swear to God, like I felt like I had, like I was at my prom and I had like a prom baby. Like so, it was, it was that bad. So yeah, but so you're in the bathroom like a good 15 minutes while I'm just like squirming in my seat. <laughs> And I'm like, what do I do? I'm like, I have to go so bad. And then I'm like, well, the food's going to get cold. So I started eating it. 
<laughs> That's probably not the best idea. No. But as I'm eating it, I'm just like, maybe it'll make the pain go away. Nope, so, not even. So I, I just keep texting you, and I'm like, hurry up. And you're just like, dude, give me five more minutes. Like, no. <laughs> But I finally came back, and then you came. I and finally, I see you. I see like the top of your pack <laughs> coming out behind like these people that are saying because there's all like tables in front of where the bathrooms are. So I just see like you behind it, and it's like the most glorious sight ever. <laughs> You're like walking in slow motion behind. The there bathroom. were doves. Yes, the bathroom is for me. I just popped up in the seat as soon as I saw you, and I just ran past you into the bathroom. And now you just destroyed the bathroom. <laughs> I go into a wall of stink, and it's just like I, I'm encased in this horrible bathroom. And I'm like, oh my god, what the hell? But it was clean so at I, least. I'm like, I gotta close my. I'm like, I'm like, I can't breathe. I'm just gonna have to like put my, put my shirt over my face, over my nose. You gotta like ninja shirt it a little bit. You're just like, like one of these. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like breathing. Well, I'm not looking at videos, so I don't know what the one of these is. But I put the shirt up over my nose. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, exactly. And I'm just like breathing the smell of tag body spray. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, and I'm just like, okay. And I'm, I'm laying the toilet paper down in the seat because God knows what your ass did to it. Oh, it was bad. So finally, I don't like the bathroom was pretty clean when you were done with it. It just smelled awful. <laughs> like, and it's like you, at least you could like wipe the seat if anything. Oh yeah, I did. I totally did because I know how you are. You know yeah, what I mean? So, so I was I just like, I'll make I sure that. Literally, I'm just going to the bathroom, and then you're texting me. You're like, how is it? <laughs> <laughs> I just write that glorious. Oh, glorious. Now, we told you that story to tell you this story. We uh, we, we go back to the theater. Well, no, 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 we, we, I get out of the bathroom, right. and we just enjoy the meal. No, we, we did. Just, we just go and we eat the meal, and we're like, okay. And then, we, yeah, we're like, we get into the bath, we get into the car, and we're like, okay, let's let's head back to the theater, because we're going to the Orlando Film Festival. That was our lunch, like, let's go to the theater. <laughs> and as we're in the car going to the theater, both of us are like squirming in our seats and we're like, oh god, we gotta go to the bed. <laughs> it's just like collective, like, I know you have to go, you know I have to, we don't even have to say it. No, not at this point. So like, we're like rushing to the theater, and we're like, because we were, we were going to stop at a Walmart because you had to pick something up, and we're like, fuck Walmart, <laughs> let's just go straight to the theater. Totally. We get to the theater, do the parking, go through all the hassle and stuff, we get in the elevator, go down, go into the theater. We just blow right to the bathroom. Right to the bathroom. We grabbed stall. You know, we left the car. Did we leave courtesy stalls next to each other? Was there a courtesy uh, stall in between us? I think so. Yeah, I think we did that. So yeah, cause it's like there's a couple of stalls in there. So yeah, we, we, we run in. We go into the courtesy stall. So there's a space between us. <laughs> We're just, I'm in, I'm in my bathroom. I'm just like, okay, relaxing. Just like waiting the bowels of the Panda Express. You're, you're, you know, just two stools over, mm -hmm. and then you just start talking to me. Yeah, well, and we should, we should make a, we should make a point to say, like, we're in a movie theater at a film festival, and this is how yeah. we're tying it into indie film. We are at the Orlando Film Festival. This is how many days in are we at this point? A couple days. Uh, like four days. Four days in, and and so we are. People know us, especially they'll know me because I'm wearing my stuck like Chuck shoes. Right. So anyone that's like, hey, who's that guy stinking up the bathroom? <laughs> The guy who wears the stuck like Chuck shoes, it's Jerry. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, Jer that's the thing. She because the you know obviously if you've ever been in a fucking bathroom, the stalls don't go all the way to the floor. So and I. I Every time I've ever worked at an office building or anywhere, um, <clears throat> I've always tried to see the shoes of the person that is sitting next to me at, in a bathroom because then you can tell who's basically a f filthy fucker. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And especially, like, I listen, did they wash their hands? Because I'm not going to shake that guy's hand later. You know, like, I'm just very uh, observant about things like that. And by the way, someone says... <laughs> Uh, Darren Levine says, uh, this is a story you're not supposed to tell others. You're supposed to deny its existence. And then he's, he said, he, just, he called it battle shits. <laughs> I, I, I hope it was worth the fun. <laughs> Dude, that, that, that's got to be a but thing. The story's not over yet. Oh, yeah, we're not done yet. So um, we're talking back and forth, and then someone walks in. Ooh, unbeknownst to us. Unbeknownst to us, but known to them. <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. I'll allow you to... What was the, um, what did I say? I was just like, how are you doing over there? Or something to you. And what did you say? It was like the most vulgar way of <laughs> describing that you were going to the bathroom. Like, I'm sure it was something like, I am absolutely just... You were just like, 
uh, you were like, I've I've got a chocolate army blowing out of my ass or something like that. <laughs> what? Like, a chocolate like, army? I don't even remember. I, I wish I had said that. Like, it was just like, we're storming the beaches of Normandy or something on this. Or, like, it was... Yeah, whatever it was, like I, it was definitely something. Just like I just destroyed this this toilet. Like I feel like I'm, you know, giving birth, uh, or you know, whatever it was. That it was, was bad. Because you, you said a couple of things. <laughs> one of them was I'm giving birth out of my ass. <laughs> That's what it was. I was giving birth out of my ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then. <laughs> and, and Devin Watson says you suck my battle shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, B five hit. <laughs> Oh, man. But then, then what did the guy say? <laughs> he said, ah, that's the thing. That's the part of the thing I don't remember. I was l going to rely on you for that bit because you're usually really good about remembering shit there, like that. I don't remember what he said. He <coughs> said something so innocently, though. Like, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't like he was discussed or anything. Oh, no, it wasn't the guy who was just like, conversation. Did, yeah, didn't the guy just say, like, good to know or something like that? Like, he was just, you know, very matter-of-factly joining into our private no, conversation. Joined the conversation. Yeah. Because then he goes... Cause you, were, cause then you were like, oh, and he's like, yeah, we're, uh, not, not doing too good here. So, and then the guy said, where'd you go? And then you said, can't say And I'm like, Nick, stop talking to the stranger about your head. And then he said, he's just like, oh, he goes, uh, yeah, he goes, oh yeah, I, I stay away from there. And you're just like, oh yeah, I'm blowing out my ass. <laughs> so you know, the guy just seemed cool. So you were just like, matter of factly, just saying like. <laughs> Explaining your bowels to him, and I'm just in the school, kind of like, oh my god, they know who I am because of my. <laughs> well, you and I were texting back and forth next to each other too, at the yeah, same time. I mean, and I texted you, to shut up. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, no, stop. <laughs> now, that, <clears throat> I, 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 I find that I leave way more dignity behind at film festivals than I do any other type of like um, industry thing I participate in. It's just you get to a point when you're a few days into a festival where it's just like I'm already tired. I've already met everybody. I've seen if I'm lucky, I've seen a bunch of flicks. In our case, it's like we've interviewed the world. You know what I mean? And it's just like at this point, I don't give a shit who knows what you know that I'm taking a dump. You know what I mean? It's just like all right, guys. Well, you need to deal with this. This is what's happening next. You know. It, but the fact is that the the Panda Express destroyed both of us. You know, like the power of the Panda. The power like of the, the Panda. The food touched my taste buds. It was like an Olympic event of synchronized shitting. It was, I've never seen anything like, and by the way, if we had an audience before this, they, we've, they've got to be fucking gone by now. It, but, yeah, it, it was like <laughs> that family guy when Peter is versing Michael Moore and the shitter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was bad. So... Um, Tying that into St. Louis, they're gonna name a shitter if she kept the <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Landed! Nice! Ah, uh, gotta love it. <laughs> By the way, I followed 8-Bit and they followed us back and they said, uh, thanks for the follow. Not a film, but we'd love for you to check out our Geek Bar Kickstarter campaign. So I retweeted it for them. So hopefully you guys out there check that out and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you know, give them a look at it. I'm, I'm actually really, really excited because um, I like unique stuff like that, geek stuff like that, and it actually ties into cool to something that Jerry has in mind for that he put in a script like a year ago. So hopefully that can tie in at some point. Um, and, and by Devin Watson says both of you committed desecration on that bathroom. They must have needed an exorcist in there after you left. <laughs> yeah, they, they they came in there with the bell, book, and candle to expel the spirit. Oh, the fucking power of Christ compelled us. <laughs> Oh, it was bad. But, um, but yeah, so... And afterwards, we, we did a lovely interview with a nice filmmaker. We did. We definitely did, you know? We probably had to go back later for a maintenance wipe, but, you know, whatever. Um, no, no. I, I took care of that while I was in there the first time. <laughs> No, it was it, it was it was weird. I mean, and, but you know that, that's the that's thing. Disgusting. That's the thing with with film festivals too is that you know you are so not only you're out of your you're shit next you you never know. Imagine if that was like a producer or like a, uh, a you know like an industry person who happened to be a distributor. You walk out and it was Allison Brie. You're like, oh shit, I'm in the laser. <laughs> no, it was like Haley Joel Osment. You know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, no, you I mean, smell dead people. <laughs> Nice. 
Do you think that wasn't the year that they were there? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> there was, they didn't really have a lot of famous people there last year, did they? No, this year, they scaled it back this year, so that way they can focus on making next year better. Yeah, I hope so. I like I like the Orlando Film Festival. I'm really hoping that they um, that the things. I don't want to say this was a glowing endorsement. For it. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando Film Festival, a great place to shit. Oh, totally. Great clean bathrooms. It was a it's a great bathroom. <laughs> it really is. Like I'm like George Costanza. Like I'm one of those people that's just like I will tell you anywhere in this city where there's a good bathroom. Like you name a street, I'll tell you the building and where to go in the building and it's got the best bathroom. Like I'm really. I'm not obsessive about it, but like I like to shit in a clean environment. Like I'm not one of those people. Like I'm not like train spotting where like you can you know in that bathroom. Like fuck no, I would leave, I would just as soon shit my pants than have to shit in a bathroom like that because uh, my pants would be cleaner. Um, yeah, it's it's. Well, not after. <laughs> I think even after. Um, but you know, I, yeah, I'm just I'm really I mean for lack of a better term anal about that. You know what I mean? You're the one that taught me the secret that you got to go to the family bathroom in the back of the Walmart because yes. it's much cleaner than the one in the front. Yeah, and I have used that to this day. Because <laughs> I was so genuinely surprised by how nice they kept their family bathroom. Yep. Yeah, I mean it, every time, like I always held it in. I'm like, oh. They're like, you want to stop? Go to the gas station. Go to that. I'm like, no. I'll hold up for Walmart. <laughs> one in ten minutes anyway. There's always one in ten minutes. Everyone, everyone. It was like, when are we gonna be at ten minutes? It's like, it's like Massachusetts. Like, I'm we're twenty there, minutes away like, from oh, anywhere. Shit, we missed the Walmart. I'm like, that's okay. That's so, six minutes. <laughs> And the other trick I have with Walmart too is, and regardless of what I need to buy, I typically always use the checkout in the electronic section. I could be buying a washer and dryer, and I will still use the checkout in the electronics section because there's typically less of a line there than there is in the front of the building. Washer and dryer, that's like just a weird... I, I was just trying to think, like, what's the weird, not the weirdest thing you could buy at Walmart, but like, like what's I the... buying a shirt. I was just like, what's the most non-electronics related item so that I could... So a washer and dryer is non-electronics related, and is more non-electronics related than a shirt? Look. I was just going with what I could think of. I pulled you out on it. Oh, fuck you, guy. Oh, this is why you need to not work with me anymore. Um. Collaboration. <laughs> Collaboration. See, we tied the whole episode together right there. So, which reminds me, dude, like, I was scared we wouldn't have enough material to talk about for this entire hour. We were in, about shit for 30 minutes. We talked about literally shit for 30 minutes. Uh, you know, what, what, so when, when people ask you guys, so what did film, so what, what was the topic what of film star, film star they, were, they, they talked, talked a lot of shit. A dump. No, they don't. They, they talked a lot of shit. That's what they did. They, they talked a lot of shit. Um, but yeah. They talked about synchronized shitting at the Orlando. <laughs> they had that, that, that music playing like in the background. It was like event. <laughs> it was, dude. It was just like, and drop and pop and squat and... And lift the left leg. Oh, dude. <laughs> Give it a little shake, you know? Oh, man, it was bad. And grip the sides. <laughs> it was... And to the right. <laughs> and to the, and to the right. Back into the left. <laughs> back into the left. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. I love the Orlando Film Festival. Uh, I, I will have to travel a lot longer to have that same experience again because you know if, not in the car with me <clears throat> and it sucks for Jerry because Jerry doesn't drive so and it's not like I'm gonna drive cross-country to go to Orlando so I'm wondering like what's our future of going to that festival like is it gonna be that you eventually get a car and learn how to drive and then I, I fly to no, your I'm place and we drive fly down here. you'll just we'll both fly down I think so yeah I guess that's what we'll have to do. But um, even if I like, got a car, I'm not going to drive to Orlando by myself. Why not? I'm driving to LA by myself. Yeah, but uh, <coughs> you're probably going to get raped along the way. That's probably true. That's probably true. Um, you know, but you know, I welcome our new overlords. Um, I don't know how that what that means. Yeah, what the hell? Are you going to get raped by aliens in the Nevada desert? I'm going through Texas. It's probably going to be you know. Not Texas, uh, Kansas. So I'm going through Kansas, so I'll probably get abducted. Um, I, I don't know where we're going with that. See, I was gonna tie up. I was gonna tie up the show in a nice fucking bow, and then you just like opened your mouth and killed it for me. How did I kill it? You welcomed <coughs> the overlords that were raping. Yeah, but before that, 
You were the one who was like, rape! Which isn't funny, sir. Rape is not funny. I'm gonna grape you in the mouth. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the best way to skid you know it's good. There you go. Lovely. Do um, you even know what that is? No. no. Oh, it's such a good sketch. And you just said rape isn't funny, and that the whole thing is they're doing a <coughs> pitch meet for uh, a grape soda company, and their slogan is, we're going to grape you in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy that's just like in the grape is like, I'm going to grape you kids. And it's, it's so funny. Nice. So rape so, could be funny in that type of context situation, but nice, not in the real world. Nice justification, Jerry. So that, that said, folks, um, we're going to be... get the show, like, two minutes earlier. Let's just, like, cut two minutes of this out. I'm too lazy for that, so I'm just going to... I'm just about how rape is funny and <coughs> or, or you could just let me finish the show, you fuck. Um, so here's the thing, guys. Uh, we've got... Uh, set, according to this, 17 more days to go for our campaign. So uh, hopefully, if you like what you've heard here tonight, you will uh, <laughs> you will decide to uh, continue giving. Uh, we really do have a lot of great plans for what we want to do for independent film and filmmakers when we get out to LA. Um, we can't talk about a lot of the details of a lot of them, but I, I guarantee you, um, it's going to be more than just film snobbery live and. Um, and screening series and stuff like that. We really have some cool stuff lined up. Um, it's just uh, gathering our resources, getting settled, and uh, getting to work. So we're really excited about that. Um, we uh, we you know encourage everyone if you can to just give generously if you're able to. Um, we're at 1,900. And if you can't give money, give time. Just like tweet out about the campaign. Tell some friends. <coughs> Facebook it. You know, we, we appreciate that just as much. Google Plus won it. I still won't read that. I know. There's no way to like... There's really... no way cool way to say it. Oh, you tweet it out. You could do what I did. You could create a Pinterest board and you could pin it that shit. Pinned it. Yes. You could pin it that shit. Pinned it. Pinned it. Yeah, I, 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 you're on Pinterest now? I'm on Pinterest, yeah. Yeah, I still haven't signed up. I, I know. We had that conversation. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah. You, were, you were on my side of the conversation last time. You're like, yeah, I don't see any value in it. I really don't. I still don't see any value of it, but I'm on it. It's just because I, I the only value I see is that if people see the value of what we put up there. Like if I'm if I'm posting about other people's campaigns, if I'm posting about um, movie websites or filmmakers or movies or something, whatever, like then there's value not to me but to other people. You know what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> you know, I'm hoping that that will be a, um, I'm hoping that in the future there will be a, a thing for that. But, yeah, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, that said, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash film snobbery. Uh, follow Jerry, jerry, uh, cavalero.com, twitter.com slash get stuck. Um, I, I fucked it up, so I tried to save it a little bit there. Well, um, it kind of was fine until you said you fucked it up. I know, I know, but whatever. Um, you can also uh, fan us, like us, whatever the hell they want to call it now on Facebook. Like us. Like us. <coughs> Facebook.com slash Film Snobbery. Which I, we... I'm so mad that they changed it to like. I mean, I know it's been a while, but I still like fan because I used to, be, I used to say, please F us. It would befriend us on MySpace, fan us on Facebook, and... Farm us on Farmville. Twitter. And follow us on Twitter. <laughs> right. So I, I used to say, uh, please F me and stuff. And like, it, I thought that was funny. And, and you're surprised that you've gotten zero responses to that. <laughs> I've got a lot of responses from, from very nice men. <laughs> um, <coughs> so <coughs> I can't get rid of this cough. <coughs> I literally have had this cough since January. I'm probably dying, but Sundance. whatever. It is. It's the Sundance cough. So, um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so d definitely check out what we're doing there. If you can, um, uh, Indiegogo.com slash moving forward is our Indiegogo project. Um, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, go to that project also to keep up and uh, updates. We've got more updates coming um, about some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, some people joining the, the team. Um, people, you know, I put up a video today. We've got um, a map up there with our route that we're going to be taking. And, you know, if you guys want us to see you some t somewhere along that route, you know, let us know. We'll make a stop. By we, I mean I. We'll make a stop um, if it's not too far out of the way. And um, that said, we've got a, another show coming up again uh, next week and the week after, and that's it. We're going on hiatus until we, uh, we're in the new studio, and we, we kind of retool a little bit. And uh, 
<clears throat> I'm very, very excited. Things are moving forward, and I'm always, uh, I'm always excited to see that. So, uh, from uh, it's, it's a shame though that this is this is like the last time that we're gonna do one of these old school bullshit talk about anything. Me and you just chatting conversation shows. Quite possibly, quite possibly. So it's yeah, we've only got two more shows left, and you know, um, I think both of them have guests, but um, I think one of them just isn't one hundred percent confirmed yet. So we'll see. But uh, March twenty ninth is our last show, and uh, we get in the car, and I leave April first, and uh, that's all there is to that. So uh, so hold on, I'm gonna try the new end thing here, the the sign off. <clears throat> so all right, ready? So. Uh, so you go ahead and make sure to check out everything we're doing here at uh, filmsnobbery.com every day. And until next week, be indie. Does that work? You like that? I think stay indie would, would make more sense. Until next week, be indie. That's it's like always remember to be indie. That would, that would make more sense grammatically. I hate you so much. We're, on, we're still on, by the way. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, but we're still on. So be indie.